Hello! Welcome to Inky Art School. This video was a live class I held on Facebook as part of my free 10-day Inky Art School course. You can watch all 10 videos and get the free downloads I mention at www.johannabasford.com forward slash Inky Art School. I'll pop a link below. And if you like this class, be sure to check out my book, How to Draw Inky Wonderlands. It's jam-packed with easy-to-follow, step-by-step tutorials, creative project ideas, and of course, it wouldn't be an inky adventure without some pages to colour. Thanks for watching and have fun! Hello everybody and welcome to day four of Inky Art School. Uh, I've discovered something amazing. I can zoom my camera in and out. I am not kidding. I um, It occurred to me last night that I should just zoom the camera out and do... Uh, oh, hold on. We had a voice issue there. Uh, zoom in when I'm going to do show you some drawings. So I'm going to dive straight in and show you the beautiful images that were uploaded to the colouring gallery. The colouring gallery. The gallery post on the how to draw... Well, I just start this again on the Inky Art School group page. So, thank you so much for sharing your work. It is the best part of Inky Art School. I mean, obviously, I love the live sessions, but getting to see your drawings and to see how happy people are and how um, confident and enthusiastic you are, and like so many people saying, "Holy moly, I didn't know that I could do this," and that's the thing. Like, I took a little look at some how to draw courses online. And they're all about like perspective and um, how to draw a bowl of fruit and all those things, which are really, um, yeah, old school. And if I, I kind of think if you were going to do those courses, you would have done them by now. So with this course, we want to do something a little bit different. And the emphasis was on getting you a set of really quick cheat sheets almost so that you could knock out a drawing, be super happy like you guys all are, um, and then realise that you can do it and then develop your practice. So well done to everybody. I mean, day four and um, we are like on a roll, totally bossing it. Okay, so here we go. I have picked three uploads to the gallery post that I'm going to share with you. Wait till you see this, folks. So wait, 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 wait. Oh, <laughs> ta-da! <laughs> Should have done that yesterday. <laughs> This one is by Julia. It's super pretty. Thank you, Julia. Love your little flowers. I it's particularly like particularly liked your little. Did we decide this was like a lupin or a foxglove or something? I like those little details. Next up, we have Patrick. Now look, I love that this is two different people's work. But I mean, it's obviously the same tutorial, but look, they've just, it's just so different. I love the way that Patrick has slightly less detailing, specifically like in here, but that his lines almost seem crisper, more graphic. Super pretty, love that. Last up, we have our gold star achiever of the day. I want to say Rika, maybe Rika, R-E-K-A. Please let me stop hamming up your name. Here we go. So this one is super pretty. Obviously she's added colour, but I think the thing that I like the most was like these little bits where, let me zoom in because now I can do this. Look, where the flowers have overlapped her grid lines. So although in the tutorial I was like, stay within the grid lines, super pretty when it just escapes a little bit and I don't know if that was intentional or if you know she was drawing and it just sort of escaped a wee bit and she went with it but there you go that just shows you how you can take a method and do something completely different how lovely is that and how quick must you have done that because we just did this tutorial 24 hours ago well done it's super super pretty good morning everyone I'm getting all the hello posts Back to me. So thank you everyone. Please remember to upload your pictures. <laughs> Eating my own hair there. Uh, upload your pictures to the gallery post on the Facebook group. I have to make a confession guys. I was trying to go through them all and comment on them and like every single one of them. There's over a thousand posts on there now. Like I just, I'm a bit overwhelmed. 
And also, I was trying to go out in the evening here in the UK, so like in about five hours time, and again in the morning. I'm going to hop on one time because I'm realizing that a lot of people are catching up later, so I'm missing a lot of comments. So I'm going to hop on and I'll be live on the group in the morning UK time, probably like between 5 and 6 a.m. if I'm being honest, before my kids get up. Um, and that is when I'm going to like all your posts and answer your questions. But I have a huge favor to ask. The community is so important. So if you are on that Facebook group and you see a picture that's super pretty or you know the answer to a question, dive in. It's a community. It's about sharing your knowledge and cheering along other people as well as showing off your own work. So just as you are uploading your picture, take a look at the few that are there already and give them a thumbs up or a wee love heart or leave a little comment and just cheer on your, cheer on your comrades, I suppose. Because that's what we all are, aren't we? Okay, this is my very um, professional filing system of papers this side to papers on the floor. Today we're going to have a quick chat about mistakes. So this is something that came up in a question yesterday and I said I would answer it today. So the lady that posted the question, I am so sorry I didn't write down your name. I want to say Erin but I might have made that up posted a picture of um, her drawing that she'd done and she had uh, been drawing on office paper because she had printed out the download and she'd made a wee mistake when she was inking in a, a lantern and she wanted to know how to get rid of it and she'd gone online and read that you could scrape off the ink with a scalpel which if, if you don't know is, is one of these terrifying like so sharp uh, there was a boy in art school actually and I think he was either architecture or graphic design that I think had one of these in his pocket as he was going down the stairs from the library and obviously he fell and you know what happened it was a first aid emergency um, so yes you can use a scalpel to really gently scrape off ink on some papers now that's a really important bit there so if you are drawing on a super thick artist paper like something like a really thick cartridge watercolor paper the paper is thick enough that you can scrape off gently I mean you're literally like tickling the surface with a blade and uh, you would just it would almost be like sanding it down as if you were um filing your nails I couldn't remember the word there and you would take down the surface layer of the paper and that would remove the ink if you're trying to do that on office paper, the, it's just so thin, there's nothing there. You're just going to rip the paper or abrase the surface so badly that, I mean, it, it, it's, it's going to be tricky for you. So here are my two techniques that I would suggest. Number one, you can get, this is called a Posca pen. So a Posca pen, it just looks like this and it's got white water-based paint in it. This is actually a really thick one that I used to uh, draw on the window in the studio. I'll show you a picture of that. But it's water-based so it would come off. Um, but what you can do is get a thinner one of these. This is quite a thick one. It says a 5M. Cult pens is where I get mine. Um, and you can just really gently put white paint over the top of the blemish or the mistake and basically build up a layer of white on top of it so that you can then draw on top of it. It would be like the art equivalent of Tipex. Don't use Tipex on your drawings. It's, it's thick and I assume oil based and just horrible. I mean, really, I think the only thing Tipex is good for is for teenagers to like write their name on their pencil case or their school bag. I used to paint my nails into pecs a lot. Don't use it on your drawings. Second option would be, and this is one that I would always favour, if you make a mistake, lean into that mistake. And by that, I mean, don't try and fix it. Just work out a really curious, creative way around it. So for example, ladies and gentlemen, Claire Holloway mentioned in a live video a while ago um, the elephant's leg and I was like hello I have no idea what you're talking about <sighs> I remember the elephant in question was that in Magical Jungle here he is look at him he's happy I'm sure loads and loads of you have coloured him in and just thought what a happy little elephant in that jungle but oh no no my friends you might notice that his hind portion 
is somewhat camouflaged behind this dense bit of foliage. And here is the reason why. I could not draw the back legs of an elephant. Like I tried a lot, they were just looking horrendous. Luckily, I was still at the pencil stage when this was happening, but I don't know, I couldn't, and I looked at references, I sketched it, I turned the page upside down, which is what art teachers sometimes say to do, I don't know, it flips the neurons in your brain or something. I could, it just looked awful. So I did what any self-respecting artist would do, and I hid the bit that I couldn't draw behind something else. Ta-da! You would never have known. So that's my top tip. Draw in pencil first, and then if things like that are happening, you can just avoid it. Now, obviously this lady might have drawn in pencil first, and then when she came to ink her drawing, there was like a splodge or a smear or something. That's different. At the composition stage, if you are having difficulty with something, just go ahead and hide it. You totally have my permission. There was a program on the Food Network, I don't know if it's still on, called Cake Boss. Did any of you guys see that? It was amazing. So it's this crazy American baker and he makes these amazing cakes and he was speaking about how he like shoved his thumb in like the wrong bit and he just covered up the thumbprint with a really beautiful like little icing flower or something and he was laughing. He's like, every time you see a beautiful, really fancy wedding cake or celebration cake and there's like a beetle or not a beetle, you wouldn't put a beetle on a cake, like a butterfly or a little cherry blossom or a, a daisy made out of icing in just like a slightly odd place and you're like, oh, that's like a really unique touch. No, what has happened is the baker has shoved their thumb by accident through the icing, something's dropped on it, there's been a blemish, and they've covered it up. So the lesson here is don't freak out about mistakes, they happen, just work around them. And there is a series of things in my colouring books where I have hidden things I can't do. I maybe was trying, there's a raccoon, this is a good one, there's a raccoon in Enchanted Forest, and I knew I wanted to draw a raccoon. And I couldn't for the life of me draw his body. It just looked terrible. So I just did his little raccoon head poking out from behind something. Ten points to anyone that can find it. But it's, it's pretty near the end of Enchanted Forest. So there you go. That's what to do about mistakes. Right. What else have I written about mistakes? The only difference between you and a pro I've written is mindset. Everyone makes mistakes. It's not that a pro makes less mistakes. It's just that they're not so, um, not bothered about them because they do bother you, but they don't halt us in our tracks as much. And I think the quicker that you learn to just accept mistakes and that they're a part of the creative process, the better. And yeah, work out some tricks and tips to <whistles> circumnavigate. Okay, let's do some drawing. Today, my friends, we are drawing fish because we are progressing onto the ocean part of the new book. There you go, how to drawing kilometers. Look, like there's a sneak peek at all the stuff that we've got coming. I'm all planned out. So in today's class you will need your pencils, your drawing pencil that is. I am using <gasps> where are my pencils? Oh, I <laughs> said so that I can remember putting them on the desk. I put them down here. You will need your drawing pencil, your drawing pens, an eraser, and your drawing paper. I am drawing on Statler. Oh, let me pop that out the way. That little layout paper, I've got a 0 0.3 fine liner, Dalla Rowney layout paper, silly billy, a 0 0.2, my eraser, and this. somebody posted a link to a dust free Statler eraser, which I have never seen before, I and mean, you could only buy like a pack of five and import them from America, so I'm guessing it's not something that we have here. Totally going to uh, look them up. Okay, so... Let's begin. Bear with me folks, I'm just going to find the page that we're going to work on. So today we are going to follow a few of the fish tutorials that are in your book. So here is the ocean section. Oh look, it must be right. There's the binding. Uh, 
we're going to do this step by step tutorial and draw a few fish. So let me get into position. I'm going to zoom this in. Somebody has asked, quite a few people have asked about drawing large, like how do you do it? My advice would be just use a larger pen because then you will instinctively scale up your drawing because you have no option to. So I'm about to draw a pencil, but just to quickly show you, this is a 0.3 fine liner. If you were drawing with a 0.8, you would have no option but to draw much bigger because otherwise that is just going to be a whole inky mess. Okay, folks, so let's draw some fish. I am going to start off with my pencil. And let's do... Oh, I thought I tabbed up which ones we were going to do. Never mind. Let's start off with this one here. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. Oh, we're at max, we're at max zoom. So I would start off with drawing a line like that, and then a line like this. And what I would call that shape would be like a lozenge. Think of it as a squashed lemon. Now let's add a tail. So you could do this line straight like this. I'm going to do it a bit more curved. Like that. And then join these two points up again. Not I'm not going not going to draw a straight line. This one is a little bit more curved. So you could draw straight lines, but I think this. So, oh, can you hear that helicopter? I think this makes it look like it's got a bit more movement to it. Next up, some fins. Now I'm sure there'll be some marine biologists, my parents included, watching, going. That's not the appropriate number of fins for that kind of style of fish, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I know, folks. I just make this stuff up. It's just like none of my flowers are real flowers either. Okay, I'm just checking everybody's... Everybody's here. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so now we've drawn that. Now let's draw some details on it. So... I'm going to draw a wee semicircle here, bit of an eyeball situation, and then let's do some markings on them. So I'll make this one like a, a sort of tiger striped fish. There we go. Now to ink him. I'm going to use my 0 0.3. There we go. So fish are just like flowers in that if you learn the basic formula, which usually for me means body tail, fins, markings, you can develop like a, a library in your imagination of different patterns, different fin shapes, all those things, and then you can start to put the bits together and make up your own variations. It's a little bit, I used to have a thing called a fashion wheel, which was like this plastic wheel that had like loads of different heads, loads of different tops loads of different skirts and trousers and then loads of different shoes and you could combine all the different bits to make like so many different variations of fashion outfits so it's just like that you need to learn some uh, markings learn some thin shapes all those things and then you can combine them in any order and make up your own ones let's add some so for the tail markings I always do the first line from the point of the body straight out because that kind of sets the tone so to speak and then because this line's curved you sort of want to try and follow that so there we go and then same here I like to do these lines quite close together Makes them look quite dense. 
and this one as well. So I follow the the sort of outer line of the fin. There's his little fins. Now it's up to you if you give him a mouth or not. I mean, obviously nobody wants to see a sad fish, so you would instinctively draw a smile on him. The only thing about that is it can make it look a little bit cartoony. I mean, he looks cartoony as it is. Let me show you. So like that, <laughs> that is him without a smile. See what I mean? <laughs> now he looks like he'd be call called like Mr. Cod or something. <laughs> Let's add a few more details. I am going to do some zicky zaggy lines here. Oh, he looks like he would be called George. And there we go. Now, when we do anything else, I'm going to add a few little dots just around the sort of gill line. And a dot here, and a dot here, and a dot here, and a dot here. That's our first little fish. Also, if you're drawing some bubbles, here's a tip. So, draw them at different sizes. So, like, little one, slightly bigger one. And I sort of do them not in a straight line. And something that looks quite nice is to draw one like that, and then draw, like, a bit of one behind it. So it's overlapping. There we go. Little happy fish. Okay, next up, let's try a different one. Let's try square shaped body. So I'll do this one down here. So this one, I'm going to draw like almost like a arrow pointing and then a long rectangular body a bit like this round it off at the back so that's your your starter shape now let's add a tail i'm going to do a little tail for this guy so two little lines like that and then a rounded line here you can already see i'm starting to take shape fins let's do oh i don't like that We'll just do straight ones, like this, and like this. Next up, some wooden markings here. So I'm going to make this guy stripey, so we'll just do some stripes like this. So I'm not doing just straight up and down the way lines, I'm, I'm curving them a little bit, and that makes him look a little bit rounded and chubby. We're also going to round off that line and this one so he's not got a corner. It'll be a bit unaerodynamic. Okay. I think that's it. We'll give him an eye and then we'll ink him. Fish eyes, I always think you're better to do large circle with a little one inside it. Fish just seem to lend themselves well to having large eyes. Other things, maybe not so much. Like if I'm drawing a cat, I usually draw quite small eyes. Okay, let's ink this guy. His tail's quite high up on his little body, isn't it? Never mind. Okay, so. Do his outline first. I'm going to ink his top fin, his bottom fin, his little tail. Just put some little lines on there, maybe some dots. And then, oh, do you know what I might do as well? Go back to my pencil. I might just add like a little fin on here. There we go. And then the markings, keep them a bit rounded, give your fishes fat shape. And then let's do a little 
few little lines on his bottom and top fins. Sally Ball. What did we decide about the smile? Good idea or... Somebody's written... Wait, Valerie says, wait, pectoral fins? I don't know, Valerie. I have no idea. I should know. Grew up on a fish farm, but no. Just, I just make it up. I'm sure he would get by fine if he was to find himself in an ocean. I'm not going to do a smile on this one. We'll just give him his little beady eye. And then I'm going to do a little row line of polka dots every second stripe. There we go. And, oh, do you know what I might do though? Just to make him look extra rounded, this is a shading technique. So I'm just going to do little lines all along like the underside of him to make him look a bit rounded. I'm also going to do a few little lines like that so it looks like he's swimming. Just keep swimming. There we go. A few bubbles. There's two fish in our, what do you call a group of fish? Pod? Swarm? Shoal. Swarm. A swarm of fish. A shoal of fish. Good grief. Okay, how about one like this now? So this little guy, rounded sort of nose into quite a, quite a pointy tail. So it's rounded there, pointed there. I'm going to do his tail like this. This time I'm going to do a tail. Let's do one that's like this. So here is the base of the body. We're sort of going to do it into there. So it's a bit of a forked tail, almost like a swallow would have, although I am aware that a swallow is a bird. Okay, we'll do a couple of little fins. And this one I'm going to do his face like this. And his eye here. Oh, I'm going to have to give this guy a smile. Um, and then, I think with this one, We'll do some, what will we do? Let's do some spots. There we go. That's an EQ. Now I feel bad that this guy down here hasn't got a smile in my mouth. I'm going to have to give him one. There we go. Okay. And we'll start inking this one. This feels a bit darker to do. It's maybe just my imagination. So I'm going to do all the erasing in one go at the end. So we'll do all the inking first. And then we'll erase it at the end. And when I'm drawing pictures for the colouring book or for a freelance client, I would do all the pencil in one go, then all the ink. And I don't erase because I just have it on the layout paper and I lay it over the top. But I wouldn't advise doing a bit, inking it, erasing it, doing a bit, da 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 da. I think you're better to, to do it all in one go. Because also, if you make any changes, it's better to have it all still in the pencil stage. So you can sort that out. So there you go, that runs you through the basic formula for fish. So you really are talking body, tail, fins pattern. I've just remembered you'd like me to leave it on there a bit longer so that you can take a peek. I'll put it back. So I hope that's given you some ideas for how to tackle fish. We're going to do a tutorial later on, and there's one in the book as well actually about how to draw birds which is basically the same sort of idea. Uh, I just use the same formula. So I think for birds, I do like body, body wings, tail, beak, or something along those lines. Um, 
I can only remember it when I'm doing it, but that's the basic idea that you would build up a library of parts and then you can just call upon them any time. All right, so now we are gonna add some inky details to the fish in the book. Let me just find my copy. We'll use this one over here. So we are gonna work on this page here. Let me zoom out again. Here are some that I started earlier. So if you don't have the book already, what I would advise doing is just copy some of these outlines. I've not done you a download because these are really basic and you guys can, we've just done a tutorial uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to flip the camera there. We're going to use this page here. And I, I haven't done you a tutorial, um, sorry, a download, because you can draw these. Like, that is that is totally doable. And also with fish, top tip here, if you're drawing something and you're a bit worried about it, do things where people can't compare it to the real thing and say that it's wrong. For example, I never do portraiture because if it doesn't look exactly like the real person, it's wrong. This fish, you've just made them up, so it doesn't matter if the bodies are weird, if the shapes don't match up, if the fins aren't in proportion, just draw anything that you like and then we can um, add some patterns. So, as you can see, I have done some already in pencil, but I'll show you how we do it on this side. Okay, let's do find a good one. Let's do some scales first because they are quite fun to do. We'll do this guy here. Somebody's just saying I can't find layout paper anywhere in Australia. Kelly, I hear that a lot. I'm not sure if this is like a UK thing. What to do is to look for a drawing paper that is a similar weight to the layout paper. 45 grams. Look for something 45 grams and you should be fine. Marker paper is often that kind of weight. I can't work out what the difference between marker paper and a layout paper is. Possibly just branding? Who knows? Okay, so in these ones, let's start off by drawing his wee neckline, face line. Adding an eye. Uh, I'm going to make this a double line like this. Now we're going to draw scales. So when I'm drawing scales, I find it easiest to start in the middle and work out. You'll see why in a minute. So draw basically like a rainbow on its side. <laughs> I don't know how you describe that. Like a squashed curly kit. And then two more here and here. You're going to get to a point where it might just perfectly fit and if not you just do a little bit of one if that makes sense. Don't worry about it fitting perfectly like I, I think this one's going to fit perfectly but if it doesn't you just do a little bit of one. So if that was to continue look it would be like that. In fact you could almost do that if that makes it easier for you. And also this line here has been basically replicated here. So I'm not just going to draw them straight like this. They're curving to meet the, the shape of the fish. In fact, if it's easier for you, draw a wee guideline like this. And that will help keep your scales in a sort of like rounded manner. Now, find like the midway point of that scale and the midway point of that scale. I'll draw them a bit bigger so you can see. And what we're going to do is draw another scale that dissects those two midpoints. So it's almost like you have another scale that comes out of the, the top of those two and like that. It makes them equidistant. That one should actually come out here, but I've just made it like that. So this is a really easy way to draw scales to make them look as though they're layered on top of each other. And if you feel like they're getting too big, 
you can make them smaller. So instead of going top to top, we're going top to middle. I do the same on that one. And then I just keep adding more and more until we get to the tail. There you go. Now you can add some extra details, like make this line of scales have a double outline, like that. You could do things like have a little line and a dot, line, dot, line, dot. These things can be inked at the end. Let me show you how it would look if it was inked. This, by the way, is also how I draw. Oh, look at that. Stop that earlier. How I draw. I want to say chrysanthemums. You know those flowers that are. Um, I'll find a bit of paper. Like this. So you draw a tiny little circle in the middle, and then you could do petals all the, all the way around, almost like a daisy. And then just the same way how we joined the point of two scales to make another one, join the point of two flowers and go all the way around, sorry, two petals and go all the way around. Is this a chrysanthemum? I can never remember. And then you could do it again. And they will gradually get bigger as the circumference of the circle gets bigger and you just keep building it up and building it up. Ta-da! It's pretty isn't it? And then, I'm going off on a tangent, I would then add a double outline to that. These are so lovely to draw by the way. And when you're inking it, I've gone off on a tangent, but we're just going to go with it. When you're inking it, there's a really lovely little thing you can do. I like to do little flicks in the detailing stage. I just think it makes them look really pretty. Hold on, bear with me folks. I know we're meant to be doing ocean today, but I just default back to flowers every time. Also, I've just remembered I promised somebody I would show them how to draw a tulip today. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna embrace this. Right, imagine this was all inked. Don't imagine, I'll just do it, I can't stop now. I'm like some sort of weird ink addict. Okay. All the way around, and then I would do like a little line like this. going to be skew off. And then a dot in each one of these. And then you can do, as the petals get bigger and you've got more space, I'm going to go down to the 0 0.2 pen for this. A, oh, no actually it's too small in there as well. I'll do a dot here again and then I'll show in the biggest petal. So another dot. Let me just check this is working. And then in this petal, we can do like a line coming from here. So it's three little lines. 
one to the middle, one to the side, one to the other side. Can you see that? Oh, focus camera, too close. Can you see that? So it's like one line out from the middle and then one on each side. I'll have to finish this now. I've maybe put the camera a bit too high up today. There you go. Tulips, well I remember, I would draw like this. Totally not related to ocean, sorry folks. I would draw like a, a U shape and then I would do a scalloped line like that. Do tulips have a bit here? I think so. Then like that for the stem. And then I would also do a couple of little bits there. That's how I would do a tulip. All right, back to what we're meant to be doing, fish. Sorry, folks. Look, I was like midway through inking this guy, just abandoned him for a flower. A manless bud here. Okay. I'll keep inking them because I want to ink them fully and then erase those pencil lines because the pencil lines are quite dark on this and you'll see how different it looks when you erase the pencil lines and it cleans it up a little bit. And I, I think I'm going to wait until he's erased to do the detailing as well because it's just a bit too grey and grubby at the moment. There you go. I'm going to add some little dots to him down here. Let's Inky little fins. If you if you do these lines starting at the base, push hard and then come off lighter, it makes the lines thicker at the bottom and paler at the top. I'll do the opposite here. So there's nothing really going on at the tip, just leave that way. Alright, there's one little fish. This is quite high up today. Oh, do you want when I see it on the bigger screen, it looks okay. Comments have, comments have frozen again. So sorry. So sorry, folk. Right, let's do another one. Uh, I'm going to do this guy here. He's quite rounded, so he's going to lend himself well to some... some smaller scales. What I might do is, so let's do some circles. This is a thing that I do on lots of different textures but it works really nicely. So I'm just drawing lots of circles in different sizes but doing them really close together. So some bigger ones, some smaller ones, and then you just really have to fill in all those little gaps. It's a bit like there's pages in the colouring books where it's like crazy patterns that are just really intense and deep with lots of little bits. That's how I create those. I sort of just do circles or shapes in different sizes and fill in all those gaps. It's actually very fulfilling. There we go. Let's draw his little eye. Fins. Let's this time do some stripey lines like that. Broken lines, I call that. And I'm going to ink him. It's like a little, like a little sponge. Your comments have completely jammed on my laptop.
There we go. Do you know what, as well, I'm not going to draw that line around his wee face. I'm just going to let the circles be the guide for that. So it won't be a hard edge, it'll just be the edge of those little, those wee circles. There we go. Okay, last one. Let's do, what time is it? Oh my goodness, 15.44, we don't have time for another one. I will, I'll just cram it in. That's because I was yapping about flowers. Let's do this guy. So, this one is like a crosshatch pattern. Do a diagonal line like that. Don't do it straight. So it's kind of like an elongated S shape. Down and like that. Down and like that. Down and like that. And these should all be parallel. Then we're going to do the X, exact same thing going the other way. Easiest way to do that is to start at one here and join it up with one down here. There you go. Then I would pick out a few of these little funny shapes and give them a double outline. Like. I've not got time to ink this guy. We're just going to have to leave him semi-naked. He'll be unhappy. He doesn't get inked. <laughs> right, let me show you the ones that we did earlier erased because I think they look really pretty when you see them without other graphite lines behind them. Oh, my eraser's really dirty. Okay, so here's our little guys here. They're well and truly dry. Now, remember when you were erasing lightly lightly touch it you're just lifting off the graphite ever so gently it'll probably take a few passes also i've just noticed i never really thought about this but i always erase in one direction so i'm pushing on the paper there and then i take it off move it down so you're not scrubbing backwards and forwards because that is when you can start to get the paper doing this which is always a disaster. So if you just erase in one direction, you can sort of anchor the other hand here and then it won't do that horrible thing with the paper. Let's just erase, so there you go. They look quite happy, don't they? I'm just gonna show you this little flower. And then, in the book, you can, I, I find I'm okay doing it backwards and forwards in the book because the paper's thicker. I think it's that layout paper that you really need to watch, an office paper if you're working on download. Another top tip, if you've got a lot of jewellery and you're doing that, that I just did, where you're wiping little bits of these are dust off your page mind that your ring doesn't scratch the paper i've done that a lot you just get like a little gray smear i can't work out how you get that off either like i quite often just have to remove that digitally so just be wary also nail polish will often transfer onto your page so please do be careful okay i think that's us <sighs> Well, thanks everybody. I hope you enjoyed that dip into the inky ocean. Uh, there's lots of pages like that in How to Draw Inky Wonderlands. You can learn how to draw loads of different fish. You can fill that entire seascape with fishes. Um, there's also pages about seaweed, all those good things. We're going to do... It's a really funny noise outside. We're going to do two more, at least two more days of ocean before we move on to forest. I know what you're thinking. What are we doing tomorrow? Tomorrow we're doing something really sweet. So my desk is just chock-a-block with eraser dust. It's really yucky. 
um, I need to get that dust free eraser. Tomorrow we are going to be doing these really sweet little ocean crests. Let me zoom out. So, it'll be based on this page and how to draw it in Key Wonderlands. And we're also going to progress to doing something a bit like this where you create a symmetrical crest. Now I saw somebody mention on a comment earlier that they would like to know more about symmetry. Tomorrow my friend is your day. The symmetrical crests and little symmetrical flourishes need symmetry obviously. Here are the things that you will need. You will need your drawing paper, whatever that may be, your pencil, your pens, your eraser. Also a sheet of tracing paper. So this is rather fancy Dalla Rowney tracing paper, which if I'm being completely honest, I have never bought before. Um, I usually just use like a cheapo own brand tracing paper or baking parchment. If you've never done that before, it completely works. So you know like that really kind of thin brown paper that you use for lining a cake tin? That totally works as tracing paper. You just need to be able to see through it. So get a piece of that. You also need a sheet of squared paper. So you can either have like a pad like this that's got like loads of paper. I think I got this from the grocery store. Or there is a download file for squared paper. I'll pop another link to that after the class is over. Please print that off uh, before tomorrow. You will also need a ruler. Uh, if you don't have a ruler, just use the side of your notebook. It's not for measuring. It's just for drawing a straight line. Um, and tomorrow's class is going to be really sweet because you're going to learn how to do those little um, symmetrical flourishes which are so pretty and have so many like actual good uses. I think sometimes drawing courses are teaching you how to draw a cube in perspective or uh, this is how to draw a landscape with some trees or my pet peeve. Evie has a book that teaches you how to draw a panda eating like sitting eating a stick of bamboo. I'm like, when is that going to come in handy? How often do you need to draw a panda eating some bamboo? I mean, it's lovely and I'm sure he's very cute, but in terms of versatility, not that great. However, with these little symmetrical flourishes, do you know what, I was getting so excited there that my hairband almost popped off the back of my head. <laughs> these little flourishes, you can use them on things like letters, on business cards. If you're writing out a menu, you could use it to break up the different courses. The crest, the bigger crest, I often use them when I'm doing friends' wedding invitations. I don't do wedding invitations commercially, but I do them for my friends. Um, and I'll do a little crest and have their initials or something in it. It's just such a really sweet thing that you can do. You can also like make up your own little motif and put it on like your letterhead paper. If you're making greetings cards, you could just have those little flourishes on, on, the, on the center of the card. Good idea for Christmas cards. If you're getting married, these are a winner and they are so easy to do. They look fancy, it's so easy to do. You do not need a computer. Okay, folks, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching today's live class yet again. Uh, I think we're gradually getting better with the tech. I'm definitely gonna lower that camera a little bit for tomorrow, but delighted to have rediscovered the, the wonders of zooming a camera in and out. Please remember to upload your pictures onto the gallery post on the page. I will try and hop on again. I'm definitely going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to say that I'm not going to do it tonight, but I know that I will because I can't help it. I just want to like seal your nice comments and speak to you. Um, if you have any other questions, post them in the comments to this video so that I see them before tomorrow. And while you're uploading your pictures to the gallery post, please Give a high five, a thumbs up, a little bit of love to a few of the other posts on there that your comrades are up, uploading. You know, it's so nice to be part of a community and part of that is giving as well as receiving. So if you are seeing a picture there that's really inspired you or like somebody's like typed up a really sweet story and you're like, that, oh my God, that's really good. Show them a little bit of love and let's cheer each other along because it's lonely out there and it's so nice being part of a creative group, especially like the ones that we've got. Like I find the creative community are very, very nice. Like the internet can be a horrible place. The creative community seems really nice. Right. 
15.53. We did it in under an hour once again. Thank you so much, people. I will see you tomorrow. Keep drawing and have fun.